Okay. So I'm going to quickly, oh, it's all probably sunscreen on the darn lens. What is going on today? Is it better? I can't even, I should have an alcohol swab somewhere. <laughs> I feel like it's blurry. Let me grab, I'm... something. Okay. Hello, you guys. I think I have sunscreen on the lens, of course. Put it on this morning and then I just washed it off. So I'm going to quickly wipe the lens here. <laughs> we'll get started. What a day. My kiddo is home sick today, so it's been a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to share the live. And then we will get going right into the live. Hopefully that didn't take too long. So I don't have any skincare on my face because I thought it would be fun to go ahead and do it with you guys as we kind of chat about winter skincare. I have my coffee here. Hopefully I'm not too slurpy. <laughs> and I'm going to pull up the questions. I was going to do this yesterday, but I spent all of yesterday thinking that it was Tuesday. So we are redoing the live on Thursday and my son is home with me. Usually he's pretty good. Usually it's the cat who is really obnoxious during the lives. So he should be fine. Um, let me just pull up the questions and we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just kind of do my morning skincare for winter here on camera with you guys. Um, and then we'll talk about PM and retinoids. Um, let me just pull up the questions so I at least have them. I know my son is probably going to be in here at some point and want the tablet back. So I will probably do the questions as I'm doing my skincare and we'll kind of go from there. I'm going to have coffee. Not enough coffee, but it is what it is. Anyone pops in, definitely comment so I know that it's working. Okay, I'm going to pop the questions and I think that should be it. start the start of the live is always slow. Some people get into it so fast. Maybe I'm just not organized enough. Questions. <sighs> okay, last thing. I'll pop the... Okay. Got my vitamin C here, so it's all ready, and we'll start doing skincare. I can't pull up the questions right now. I'll have to get to it in a sec. Hey, buddy. Okay. Your tablet. Okay, keep it really low, okay? All right, well, we'll get to the questions a little bit. Okay, close the door behind you. I'm going to get started, okay? Volume low, please. I don't think anyone else wants to hear whatever he... He likes a lot of, um, like, prank shows. All right, we're going to get started. Oh, sorry for the slow start. So for anyone who didn't see the post in the Facebook group... Um, this is going to be a live that you guys voted on just chatting about winter skincare and kind of retinoids and dryness um, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to talk about kind of adjusting your routine for winter and I'm also going to do my morning skincare here on camera with you guys since I have nothing on my face other than a little bit of mascara. Um, and then we'll talk, talk PM as well. Hi Joanna, welcome. Okay, good. I think people are starting to maybe get the notification. See, that's why I kind of blather on for a couple minutes at the beginning, because I feel like a lot of people don't see it right away. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so really quick, well, let's just get, I'm just going to start doing skincare, because my skin feels dry. I'm going to get my notes out of the way here. So, I have been swapping to, you guys know I like the Dermalore. Hi, I think that's Jelena, the golden, I, I think, yeah, that's what you said. I think I, we confirmed it last time. I have my coffee here. Okay, so for winter, um, I, well, I guess we'll chat before I get right into skincare, because otherwise I don't think it's gonna have any context. So for winter, we have a lot of what are called like environmental factors that begin to impact skin hydration, right? We, we have cold weather, we have more wind, um, a lot of us have like central heating, and all of these factors really impact the skin barrier. The skin barrier is the most superficial part of our skin here. 
Um, so because of that, it's really the hydration of the skin and the dryness of the skin is easily easily impacted by our environment. So like the heater and over cleansing and all, um, all that good stuff. So what happens is we have these skin lipids that kind of fill in the gaps between the skin cells of our skin barrier. If you think of like a brick and mortar um, wall, that's a really good analogy. The bricks are the skin cells, the lipids kind of are the waterproofing in between. So when these lipids become depleted or disorganized, the skin barrier can't function well and can't keep water in. Um, and, you know, when the skin barrier's function isn't, is, isn't optimal, um, it actually can't keep out like irritants and, and pathogens, so it can actually make like acne worse and sensitivity worse, as well as various skin disorders. So skin barrier health is often, I think, not stressed enough and a really important factor in kind of dryness and winter skincare. The other thing too is a lot of times we'll hear like how de dehydration is a skin condition and is totally separate from dryness. Um, while you can have oily skin and be dehydrated, um, due, due to the way that the skin barrier works, if you're dry, you're also dehydrated. Um, this, this is, I don't know why it's kind of kept so separately when we talk about it, but in the medical literature, they are the same. And the reason for that is if you have depleted skin lipids, your, your skin can't retain moisture. So if you're dry, you're dehydrated. Um, you know, oily skin is a little bit different because uh, oil production is due to the, the oil glands or sebaceous glands, and you can produce a ton of excess um, sebum and still have a skin barrier that isn't functioning well, right? Th those can be separate things. So when we adjust for kind of winter skin care, you know, it's getting colder, maybe you're trying to use retinoids at this time, so you're noticing a lot of dryness. Um, what I always suggest first and foremost is looking at your cleanser, right? Like in summertime, I have dry skin normally, but in summertime, I might use like a non-foaming gel cleanser. This isn't stripping, but it's not adding a lot of moisture. Um, the reason I always mention the cleanser first is just because if you are starting on the wrong foot, if you're stripping your skin and disrupting the skin barrier, then you're gonna spend your whole routine trying to put that moisture back into the skin. So first and foremost, look at your cleanser, swap to something like the Stradia. This is their Velvet Cleansing Milk. It's a non-foaming cream cleanser. It's really moisturizing. I like this better than the CeraVe just because it has a nice like cushiony texture. The CeraVe isn't the most cosmetically um, elegant. So it can, you know, it's, it, it can feel like a little bit lotiony on the skin. This feels really nice. Um, and then it's low pH, and we have a lot of evidence that suggests um, when we can maintain the, the acidity of the skin surface, we're gonna have better skin barrier function, where if you're using soaps, um, this can really disrupt not only the skin barrier, but the skin microbiome. So first and foremost is getting the right cleanser in your winter routine, considering a non-foaming cream, cream cleanser like the Stradia. I also like the Sioris uh, Cleanse Me Gently. I actually recently used it up. Um, the CeraVe, La Roche-Posay, those are both great as well. Um, any kind of non-foaming cream cleanser. If you're not super dry normally, then, you know, if you're like oily or, or combo, then, you know, a non-foaming gentle gel cleanser could be fine too. Okay, then when I look at the rest of the, adjusting the rest of the routine, um, often you'll need to swap your moisturizer. That's something that you can kind of do right away that can make a big impact. So if you're using maybe like a lighter moisturizer, like I do like the Vanna Cream still like in the morning for example, but this is a like gel, you know, gel cream type moisturizer. This is often not going to be rich enough for winter time. And again, great moisturizer. It has a lot of ceramides in here. Um, it's really hydrating, but it's often not going to be occlusive enough. Hi Daisy, welcome, welcome to the live. I hope you've had a great week so far. I'm still kind of like in disbelief that it's Thursday after thinking yesterday was Tuesday, but I'm trying to get on track here. So you will want to swap your clear moisturizer to something a little bit more occlusive that can really lock in moisture. Um, and I often will suggest, you know, looking for those skin barrier focused ingredients. We talked about the lipids in the skin at the start of the live. Uh, and they found that you, if you topically apply ceramides and other, you know, great uh, barriers like um, cholesterol or fatty acids and stuff of that nature, I did a whole post on skin barrier focused ingredients in the group actually. So look for stuff like that for an extra benefit or an isinamide, urea. Um, one of, I just got a brand new um, and I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, most of this is in my Amazon store, but when I, uh, when I save the live, I will link everything I talked about in the description for anyone watching back. So this is a brand new one because I used up a whole jar, but this is the Sauna Soy Milk Wrinkle Cream. Um, it's a little bit too bright, so I don't know if you can see properly, 
This is technically a gel cream, but it's like intensely moisturizing. It feels almost like a sleeping pack. This is great. Um, it has ceramides in here. It has squalene. It's very rich in moisturizing. Um, and then it also has various forms of soybean. Uh, soybean, are, soybean is great because it has those like phyto, like um, estrogen type ingredients that are really nice for mature skin. They're going to be really moisturizing um, if you have, I mean, if you're like 40, 40 plus, kind of approaching menopause, this will be really nice for you as well. So this is one moisturizer option that I reached for a lot. And I use this like a sleeping pack. This is why this is my second um, jar because the first one I would literally take like a half a teaspoon. Uh, maybe a little bit more and I just slather it on like a mask at night and it's really moisturizing. Um, the other options here, I think I didn't grab all of my moisturizer favorites that I've talked about recently. Like I really like the Dermatory um, Allentoin Balm. That's really rich, like it's gonna be a true balm. So it's gonna feel a little bit, like a little bit greasy when it goes on. So I would only reach for that if you have very dry skin. Um, and I'll do a little post too, just to have it like an easy digestible format. So that one's really good. Um, you guys know that I often use like the Stradia Liquid Gold. I use this more as a booster type product because if you kind of see it here, it's like more of a lotion texture by itself. Um, it does have that uh, distinctive kind of gold uh, tone to it. Daisy, yes, um, listen please. Oh yeah, yeah, don't worry. Don't feel like you guys have to write them down. I will add them in the description of the post. And I will do like an Instagram version with just the product picks too. So if you miss something, don't worry. I will make sure that it is added after the live because I know that's, that's really hard to try to keep, remember everything. I don't want you guys to be like trying to rewatch the live and write things down. That's no fun. Okay, so this is like a little slightly lighter product by itself. So you could use this by itself in the morning like under sunscreen, but I like to use this as a booster. So I will grab like a richer product. Um, let me look for a good example here, like the Lemieux 24 Hour. This is a, one of the few pricey products that I have. This is the 24 Hour Cream, which is a nice rich one. Um, this has a lot of nice ingredients, but it doesn't have like the niacinamide and the very concentrated uh, like mixture of ceramides and cholesterol and fatty acids. So I will just add a pump to whatever my PM moisturizer is. Um, I've used this for years. I was actually one of the beta testers before Stradi officially launched, and I love this stuff. Um, the only other moisturizer that I did not grab is the moisturizer version of this toner from Cellamax. Um, just has a ton of great ceramides and cholesterol um, and um, uh, too early, phospholipids, that's the word I'm looking for, jeez. So this is the toner that is newer, so I can't comment on this guy yet. I will update, but the moisturizer version is really nice. Um, this has been, the moisturizer version has been my AM moisturizer that I've been reaching for because of ceramides. Okay, so I'm gonna start to do my skincare here and we'll talk about like the ingredients I look for in my routine. Um, and then we'll do PM, we'll talk about retinoids and hopefully keep this live not too long here. Um, I do have, okay, I have the wave serum. I just wanna make sure, I think I grabbed everything, let's hope. Okay. So I, I switched to a more hydrating vitamin C. You guys know that I like the Dermalor vitamin C a lot. If you are oily to combo, that's excellent. Um, I'm a little bit more dry, so usually I'll use that, but I'll just layer it with like a hydrating toner or something afterwards. But um, just with things, oh that, yeah, never mind. I did grab that for a reason. With things being, you know, kind of getting a little bit colder and my skin being a little bit drier, I have been reaching for a slightly more moisturizing vitamin C. So that could be like the Regimen Labs Vitamin X. This has a slightly more oily, not, I don't want to say over like oily, but there's slip to it as you're applying it. And that's just due to all the antioxidants in here. But um, I grabbed a new bottle of the NCN Vitamin C because this is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and apply that now. So the NCN Vitamin C, you guys know I like their copper peptides. I actually have it right here. They're a great brand. They're like a professional brand, but they're a little bit more affordable. Um, and I grabbed their vitamin C because it's been a while since I had tested it um, and I wanted to make sure that my thoughts were the same. This is a very hydrating vitamin C that's a little bit lighter than the Skin Actives one. Um, but this has ascorbic acid, but they've added 5% magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. That is a C derivative that tends to help with skin hydration. So if you are noticing that you 
are just a little bit more dry, that can be a good option. Like the MAP in this product, the Abzian, or the Skin Actives um, Antioxidant Serum has magnesium as global phosphate. It's a great seed derivative because it actually helps with skin hydration as well as being antioxidant, for brightening, and good kind of for protection. Okay, then for winter, I'm kind of like all about layering hydration. Like I do a lot of layering with those lighter water-based steps. So I have the RNW Ceramide Mist. I like to mist this in between steps. I have very like thirsty skin. Um, an alternative though, if you don't want to like kind of splurge on a mist and use like a lot of product in that sense is, let me see if I can, I have my annoying skin fridge here. I wasn't sure where else to put it. Let me try to move it here so you guys can see. I do like this skin fridge. I put all my um, DUI beauty stuff. I showed it on Instagram stories. I put all my like DUI beauty like meso ampules and my granuling ampules. I don't know. Okay, I guess I can unplug it. So this is a little facial steamer that doubles as a humidifier. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon. You don't need to get this specific one. Um, but I recommend a, a humidifier in general, right? Um, if you're running the heater, it's going to really dry out the air and it's going to have a big impact on your skin. So even getting like a little bedside humidifier is great. This can either be a humidifier or a steamer, which is why I like this. So I will run this in the bathroom when I'm doing my skincare, just to add more moisture to the air. And you can hold it right under your skin and actually use it as a steamer too. So this is great between water-based steps. If your skin is really thirsty like mine, needs that extra moisture, and you don't want to spend a lot of money uh, burning through mists like I do. I added a little bit of the pumpkin creamer to my coffee today and I, I'm not really, I don't think I like it. Okay, so I'm going to be misting between each step. I'm going in with the TM B5 toner. This is the old packaging, just in case anyone gets a different one and they're confused. So again, I kind of layer these hydrating steps in my routine and I look for ingredients that are going to help the skin barrier. So panthenol is uh, an anti-inflammatory, it helps with irritation and itching, but it also really helps with wound healing and moisture retention. It's a really great ingredient. Putting things down on my neck, I have a very sensitive neck, so anything soothing like that is a win for me. And then I will kind of layer with other kind of hydrating options. Um, I like the Jumiso Hyaluronic Acid. That's if you like a really rich like hydrating toner, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to use the RW. Also like the Anua Birch Juice Toner that I was talking about recently. So I'll list some like toner options that I really like for winter in the description. Just because I know I talk about a lot of them. You don't need to layer to the extent that I do. Um, but again, I just really like my hydration. I have very thirsty skin. And then I will, um, I'm continuing to test this guy. This is the newer product to my routine. It's the Celamax Dual, Dual something, Dual Creamy Toner. And then the moisturizer has like the Dual Barrier Cream or something like that. So apply that real quick. And I kind of go off of, um, like go off of your skin, right? Like I have, again, I have very thirsty skin, so I can do a lot of layers and it's gonna continue to like really suck things up. I kind of go off of, you know, make sure my skin doesn't feel tight anymore and it's not like absorbing everything quite as quickly. Where, you know, if you are not as dehydrated, you'll, you'll kind of notice when products start to kind of just sit on top of your skin instead of absorbing. So you don't need to use a million hydrators like I do, like definitely make sure it's personal to your skin. And then with my serums here, kind of similar deal in the winter. And then some of them, you know, I'll talk about the ones that I like for PM as well. But morning, like I'm going to be putting on sunscreen, I'm going to be putting on makeup. I want to make sure that things aren't like overly heavy and sticky. So I do like to reach for kind of lighter products. I've talked about the Be Plain Bamboo Hydrating Ampule. I recently ordered a new one because I'm almost out. Ceramides, cholesterol, panthenol, allantoin, great kind of lighter serum, which I enjoy for morning. I'm almost out of the A. Florence Hydration Booster. This one is also a little bit lighter. Um, this one has niacinamide and also has uh, saccharide isomerite, which is an ingredient that helps with moisture kind of over time. Um, today, I'm just going to be using the Stradia Rewind, 
and I'm going to be using the Prout Ginseng Radiance Serum. And then we'll go into moisturizer and then we'll kind of go on to the dread stuff because I don't want to take forever doing my skincare. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of boring to watch someone else do your skincare, but maybe you guys can do it along with me. So I'm doing the Stradia Rewind real quick. Again, another old favorite. It has niacinamide. Um, it has N-acetyl glucosamine, which is a precursor for hyaluronic acid. It really helps with skin hydration. Um, and it helps the skin kind of better shed dead skin cells. There's more panthenol in here. I, I personally can't get enough panthenol. I feel like it's one of those um, kind of underhyped ingredients. Like we hear about it a lot, but we don't hear about a lot of the benefits of panthenol. As you can see, I literally mess between each step because my skin just soaks everything up. Now I'm using the Prout Ginseng Serum. This has um, ginseng extracts, so it's a little bit more concentrated than the Beauty of Josiah that I've been using for a while. And it has actually some growth factors in here, as well as some other nice hydrating ingredients. Okay, so now that my skin is nice and hydrated, I will either grab a lighter moisturizer for morning, or I will use a facial oil that has added active ingredients. So today I'm gonna be using the Mugu Vitamin C. This has the um, TH, no, no, it has ATIP. So it has an oil sol soluble vitamin C. I'm adding a drop of this. Um, ATIP helps with penetration of ascorbic acid. If you're like, why is she using so many different forms of vitamin C? Okay, and then I'm also adding a pump of the Imagine Dermatology Moisture Milk to that oil. The oil just kind of helps with the richness a little bit because this is a lighter, more, more hydrating lotion. The reason I like that Imagine Dermatology, and I've talked about this whole, the whole HA line for them for a while, they're really inexpensive on Amazon. They're like 10, anywhere from 8 to like 14 bucks. They're really inexpensive. But they have a bunch of ingredients that mimic the skin. We kind of talked about the skin lipid, lipids earlier. So there's squalene, there's shea, shea butter. But then they use a bunch of humectants that uh, mimic the, the humectants naturally found in our skin. So there's hyaluronic acid, there's glycerin, there's urea, um, there's amino acids, there's sodium PCA. So that's the moisture milk. All right. So now that my skin looks very shiny, I'm gonna let this sit down and when I get off of the live, that's when I'll apply my sunscreen. Do you like to kind of give this like to soak in? I think I added a little bit more of the oil than I normally would. So if you don't wanna look this shiny to start, skip the oil step. I know my skin though and it will, I know it'll sink in. My puppy like scratches my chin a lot, so as I was applying these products, I can feel the stinging. He learned from my cat to like get my attention with his paw. Okay, so just kind of working that in. Okay, so instead of actually applying the products, we'll talk about PM. So to kind of recap morning, right? Um, you want to keep it a little bit lighter, right? Because a lot of us are wearing sunscreen and um, some of us wear makeup, for example. So, you know, if you don't have time to let it soak in, like I would even skip the facial oil entirely. But, you know, we're kind of like reaching for, we want to protect our skin with vitamin C. And I used a couple other antioxidants like the Stradia Rewind um, and the, T the ATIP in the Mugu Squalene. So these will help protect the skin. Um, and then the kind of the other kind of hydrating steps I reached for weren't overly heavy, even though I have dry skin. So like the Vita B toner, you can see it's pretty watery. Um, the R and W, of course, is a mist. Oh, uh, Jelena, I used the moisture milk and the uh, squalene. That was my moisturizer step to recap you. And I'm going to be putting on a pretty rich moisturizer or sunscreen, which will kind of double um, as an additional moisturizing stuff as well. But yes, I did, it was these guys. This guy has squalene and shea butter and, jo and jojoba oil, as well as a ton of hydrating ingredients. And then this of course has added squalene in here. 
So yes, the recap morning, just kind of keeping things a little bit lighter, um, but still protecting the skin, still focusing on the, on the skin barrier and hydration. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way real quick because I feel like I'm so <sighs> disorganized in the morning. Not a morning person at all. Okay, so I'm gonna move away the stuff that I already used here and talked about. And then we will get into PM. There we go. I think that should be everything. Okay, so for PM, that's when you can go a little bit richer, right? You're just going to bed, and that's the opportunity that I use to really like pack everything in there because no one's going to be seeing my, my oily face. Um, that being said, even though I'm dry, like I, I do have a hard time slugging regularly. Um, if for anyone who doesn't know, slugging is what they're calling and just using a thick layer of petrolatum, like aquifer, aquifer the ointment. Um, there's a, of course, there's a little cat hair. <laughs> um, you know, anything that, that is mainly pet uh, petroleum jelly based, right? So that's referred to as slugging, where you apply that as a final layer at nighttime. I have a hard time doing that just because it's so heavy. I do, I will do it if my skin is really irritated. Um, petroleum jelly, there's some research that indicates that it not only like locks in moisture really well and hydrates the skin, and when skin is better hydrated, it's better able to kind of mediate inflammation, it's gonna have better wound healing. Um, but petroleum jelly can also um, basically improve the function of the skin barrier and it's able to kind of better upregulate defensins, which are these antimicrobial peptides in the skin. Um, it basically integrates with the epidermal barrier and helps its function versus, you know, interfering with its function at all. So it's great for the skin barrier and if your skin is irritated or dry or flaky or compromised, then it's great. I just can't use it every single night because it's so heavy and it feels so greasy on my face. It's just one of those feelings so I will use that dermatory allantoin, allantoin balm a little bit more just because it does sink in eventually. I'm going to take one more sip of coffee here. Okay so for PM I'm, and I'm going to talk about this PM this um, routine is going to be centered around tretinoin. This is the derma, Dermatica one. You can substitute in whatever you have. Um, but I like, the reason I like this one is because they have the added ceramides and panthenol um, and cholesterol and I do find that helps with irritation and dryness when starting a retinoid. So this is the tretinoin. Um, if you are not using tretinoin yet, then I would use um, like a retinol or something like that. This is the A. Florence um, Night Repair Retinol. Uh, Geek and Gorgeous has a really good retinol. That's gonna be one step down from Tret. Um, it's gonna be very gentle for winter, but while still being really effective. So if you're not using Tret, use something like the Retinol, but otherwise I will kind of stru stru structure this around that. Um, so you would double cleanse. Again, you can re repeat the same second cleanse as I mentioned earlier with the Stradia. You can use this AMPM. Um, often I will even skip cleansing in the morning if I don't need to during the winter just to kind of minimize any disruption to the skin. So a cleansing in the morning is optional. It really depends on skin type. Um, and then I think the other question, while we're on the subject, someone had, meant, had asked about exfoliation with tretinoin and during the winter. So something like I like to stress is that exfoliation is technically optional. I know that there's a lot of people who love exfoliation who might disagree with me, but technically it is optional because the skin exfoliates itself. It's called desquamation. It's the process that the skin sheds dead skin cells. And when you're cleansing, you know, with your cleanser and you're massaging that in and, and there's the surfactants in here, that's actually encouraging the desquamation process. You're, you're loosening up those skin cells as you cleanse. Um, same with like when you are cleansing your face with a towel, that is also aiding in that desquamation process. So when you add in a retinoid, right, and you're, and you're encouraging, you know, cell turnover and kind of speeding that process up, this further encourages desquamation. It's not an exfoliant, but it encourages that per process for, um, further. And if you're acne prone, it can kind of norm normalize that process because we see a lot of ab abnormal desquamation in acne prone skin. So exfoliation is optional, um, but you know if you have other skin concerns, then it can be helpful, right? Um, if you are focused on hyperpigmentation, 
Um, you have signs of aging, then like a glycolic acid is going to be really helpful. Same with like acne scars. Um, if you are oily, acne prone, salicylic acid can be really helpful to help um, target congestion. So it's not that I'm totally against exfoliation, it's just that it's optional and should not be overused, especially in the winter time. You know, what happens is that exfoliants do disrupt the skin barrier, and if it's already disrupted due to cold weather and dryness, um, if you're starting Tretinoin, you know, hi Nicole, welcome, thanks for stopping in. Nicole is my wonderful mod, so is Joanna, who said hi earlier. So if you are in the Facebook group, you have seen them around, and they are the absolute best. I could not do it without them. So Tretinoin, when your skin is acclimating to it, we do see some barrier disruption, right? So if you are new to Tretinoin, you should not be exfoliating at all. Um, if you are very well acclimated to Tret, and you are seeing a lot of like flakiness that you want to exfoliate, then you can. Just do it very carefully, um, and don't overdo it. Um, a lot of times what I see happen is that because with irritation with a retinoid takes some time to show up, is that someone will exfoliate, apply their retinoid, and then the next day things are fine. So they're like, oh, okay, cool. So they exfoliate again the next day, and then the next day, you know, or they use like another irritating ingredient like kojic acid. And then like day four to seven, that's when the irritation hits you like a truck and you're like, oh crap, what did I do? And it starts and then you have like days worth of irritation stacking up. So you want to make changes really slow when you have a, any retinoid, but a per particularly tretinoin in your routine. Make those changes really, really slow and really minimize exfoliation. What I like to do, if, if you have a lot of flakiness, um, I like to use like a, a cognac sponge or like a washcloth in the morning just with your gentle cleanser, a great way to remove, um, you know, dead skin and kind of flakiness that you're seeing while not over exfoliating. You can't really overdo a cognac sponge. Um, if you want to exfoliate with a stronger exfoliant like glycolic acid, I actually recommend a stronger exfoliant less often. So a 10%, um, this is 10% glycolic, 2% lactic, it's the Geek and Gorgeous, um, not the A-game because that's the retinol. Soft, soft touch, no, that's Australia. <laughs> Smooth out, there we go. Too many products in my head. So it's 2% lactic acid, 10% glycolic acid. You can, <laughs> okay, there's my one dropped product. There's one every live. Hopefully that, if, hopefully it's just the one today. It, well, I, was, I was waiting for it. I, th I thought we, we got far enough into the live where I wasn't gonna drop a product today, but it happened. Okay, so a stronger glycolic acid less often. The research indicates that it's going to be equally effective and you're not getting that constant irritation of using it every day. So that's my personal recommendation of trying to exfoliate with tretinoin is one, only do so if you have something that you're specifically trying to target. Don't exfoliate just to exfoliate. Like if you don't have congestion or if you don't have additional signs of aging you're trying to target, if you don't have flakiness, if you're fine, then don't you don't need to exfoliate, right? Um, so it's optional. If you really want to, uh, it's better to do it less often and maybe pick up a slightly stronger strength than trying to exfoliate daily and balance tret. Um, and same goes for like you could do a 20% every two weeks or so. Um, but you know you will get similar results, um, you know that way. Okay, so. I think that was all the questions on exfoliation. I just wanted to make sure I answer that. We'll kind of keep rolling on PM. So PM, again, I go a little bit richer, right? Like even with my hydrating toner, so I'll double cleanse. Um, you know, I will use like the, the thicker, more hydrating toners. This is the Juniso Waterfall Hyaluronic Acid. It's a little bit like more syrupy, if you can kind of see, and there's a lot of humectants in here. Another one that I've used for a really long time that you guys know that I absolutely love is the Sidmon. You can tell it's well-loved been in this is for some reason I left this in like by my sink for like three days <laughs> probably because I use it so often and now it's got like my kids fingerprints on it yeah, he oh speaking of which look what I finally found <laughs> this valve was missing for two weeks I wanted to talk about during it during the Black Friday sales because there's like 30% off and my son had stolen it and I could not find it I turned the house upside down looking for it um, I knew that he had it because he always tries to grab this guy. You can see it's touch activated. It's just like a little product penetration device. I turned the house upside down looking for it so I could mention it during the sale. The day after the sale, or I think like the night of, it, it, like it, he hands it to me and goes, here you 
come on. And I was like, he's like, I found it for you. And I was like, you did not find this. You had it hidden. Anyway, um, my son likes to get into certain products. So this is the Sika Youth Toner from Tussle. This has 10% panthenol, it has PDRN, um, it has peptides, it, it's like a milky, has a milky consistency to it. This is super, I don't know if I could show it on the screen properly. I should have done it on the back of my hand. At least my, my hands are getting a lot of um, product today. Maybe we'll try the back of my hand. I think it's too watery to show it properly. But it's like a, it has a milky texture to it. Um, I have been using this for, gosh, almost a year now, I think. It's very soothing, and that's because it has that 10% panthenol and the PDRN, which is wound healing. Uh, great product if you are prone to irritation, if your skin is compromised, love this product. Um, so I just lightly reach for the kind of thicker products. Um, same goes like for serums. I have really been liking the Regimen Labs Wave Serum. Any kind of any kind of uh, serum or moisturizer or toner that mimics the humectants found in our skin, I'm a fan usually. So this is the Wave Serum from Regimen Labs. Great. Um, I already mentioned I love their vitamin C for morning. Um, the R&W Ceramide Plus, this one's slightly newer because I fell in love with the mist here. You can see I am almost finished with this bottle. I already have a backup. Love the mist. So I've been testing the serum to replace the Osteuticals um, Rehydrate Serum. This compared to the mist is a little bit more moisturizing and hydrating. You can see like almost a gel serum texture. Similar ingredient deck, just a little bit more hydrating and moisturizing. So I love the Osteuticals Rehydrate Serum, a very similar ingredient deck, lots of ceramides and cholesterol and kind of barrier focused ingredients. Um, so I use that up and um, I've been using this as a replacement, great. Would the Youth Toner be a good replacement for the This Is Anne High Moist? Um, I'm almost out and trying to find something new. I'm, I'm assuming you mean the High Moist because I prefer that one to the uh, another toner from them. That's pretty good, but the High Moist is a little bit better. Um, they're a little bit different, right? The Cezanne High Moist Skin Conditioner, one, you get like this giant 500 ml bottle, um, but two, you know, it, and it has a bunch of ceramides and cholesterol, it has some amino acids in there, it has the drops tears, um, you know, but it's a little bit lighter, uh, it's like slightly thicker than water. This is going to be a little bit thicker, it's not overly heavy though, it's still a pretty light product. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say even though they're different textures, okay, I had a feeling that was you, Kelly, when you asked about the Cezanne. Uh, welcome, thanks for hanging out with me. So they're different textures, but I would say they're similar in hydration level, if that makes sense. Um, just because the Cezanne has all those ceramides and it's slightly thicker than water, um, you can really layer it on. This is a thicker texture, but it's not insanely hydrating compared to like the Jumiso or something. Um, and it has the panthenol and the PDRN and the peptides. I would pro probably try either the Sika Youth Toner um, or the Vita B5 from TM. This is really good too. This has a similar, if you like the texture of the Cezanne, we're like slightly thicker than water, um, you'll like this one. And it's really hydrating, really soothing, and it has a little bit of slip to it. I tend to find that I like thinner toners that have a lot of hydration, a little bit of slip to them, if that makes sense. Okay, so yes, the Sika Youth Toner or the TM B5 Toner I would try. Um, okay, so we talked about the Ceramide Serum as well. Um, and the Wave Serum from Regimen. The last serum that I will mention is the Nature Kind PDRN. Um, this PDRN is one of those ingredients where like I wish there was a little bit more research. It's really popular in, in K-beauty right now. So if you are nano or cosmetic needling, this is great com in combination with that. Um, this has both the isolated PDRN and the salmon egg extract in here. So two different forms of the salmon. It also has bisabolol, which is a derivative of chamomile and very wound healing. Um, great for the skin barrier. And then th this also has niacinamide. I want to say it's probably like a, at about 3%, 2 to 3% in here, which is still very effective. So this pairs nicely if you're using a retinoid in your routine since it has that niacinamide. The research indicates that um, when if you are using tretinoin, if you pair it with a niacinamide product in your PM routine, it greatly helps with irritation and dryness. So this is the last serum I will mention. It's a nice one. It's, it's a K-beauty product. 
great for doubling like post cosmetic needling etc I think my my moisture look how red this is the puppy you guys <laughs> jeez pretty red right here so that's the last serum that I will mention but it's a nice one as well well I mean I will actually mention <laughs> I will mention other serum but that's like the last like hydrating type serum there we go all right so the other products that I will mention um, one, the Isn't Tree Aloe Gel and Fresh is always a favorite. I've gone through, I think, like five bottles now. Um, hi, Daisy. Okay, Daisy said she's a new subscriber. Thank you. Um, let me catch up. Sorry, let me go back and make sure I can read the whole thing. I've been watching your videos as well as reading your blog. Fell asleep last night reading. Love it. Do you have a video on recipe? Oh, thank you, Daisy. That's awesome. Yeah, and I do have more blog post content coming, by the way. Um, those are like where I do like my deep dives, so I haven't ha I haven't added recently, just because they are very time consuming. But I'm gonna be doing a deep dive on uh, DNA repair enzymes because I've been using them for it was a year in November since I started using the DNA repair and really diving. Well, I'd been diving into the research before that, so we'll be doing a deep dive on DNA repair. And I also am going to be covering um, like a, doing a deep dive on menopausal skin. Um, or just like perimenopausal skin and, and uh, sorry, peri is during uh, pre-menopausal skin just because the impact on hormones for like women's skin is often just not discussed enough. It has such an impact on your skin, um, even just as you pass 40. So I will be doing those deep dives there. Okay, I think you asked about the DUI conductivity. Um, I, only, I think I only have it on Instagram right now. Um, it's, it's really easy. <laughs> Did I think I put it away? I actually had it out earlier, but I think I put it away because it wasn't on topic with this um, live. Okay, so I do have a post on Instagram if you are on there where it, it's the microcurrent sheet mask um, post. It's really easy. Um, all you need to do is you just need tap water um, and you can either just use like a, a salt, like sodium chloride. I tend to pick up like the pink Himalayan salt since it has some added minerals. You could use like the Dead Sea minerals. Um, you could also combine with other strong electrolytes like the magnesium flakes on Amazon. You can keep it simple though, like don't be afraid to keep it simple. Um, it's, you just want about a 1% concentration. So the ratio should be on Instagram. It's, it's, about, it's like a small pinch per half a cup. It doesn't have to be super, super precise. Just make sure that you're using warm tap water, half a cup, um, warm water. Um, it contributes to the conductivity a little bit more. It's, it's, if you have more temp, the, the um, electrolytes will better dissociate. I'm looking forward to the perimenopausal skincare discussion. I'm 48 and my skin is going through many changes. And I think you, oops, I didn't read fast. Look, thank you. Uh, she said she loved my content. Yes, I think it'll be really helpful. I've done a little bit of content on it so far, um, but it's just such an interesting subject and I don't understand why it's not discussed enough to be honest because I feel like so often it just yeah it's just not really discussed at all and then you have all these changes that are occurring as you get into your, your, your mid 40s that's also often a time where a lot of sun damage starts to become visible not that it wasn't already there but it starts to become visibly present um, and the, there's all these changes and you're like what do I like there's not a lot of um, information on like what actually to do you know um, when, when we see that drop in estrogen, estrogen in the skin, like it has an impact on everything from like collagen formation in the deeper skin, you're gonna have less hyaluronic acid in the top layer of the skin, so your skin is gonna be more dehydrated, it's gonna be less plump, um, and even it plays a role in lipid formation, so your skin's gonna be more dry. Um, it's really interesting stuff. And I know that the American Ac Academy of Dermatology in one of their conferences, um, they were talking about how you really want to intervene um, early enough. You know, basically, you really want to start like a collagen induc induction um, like therapy of some kind, like whether, whether it's microneedling or radiofrequency. You want to start it like when you're in pre-menopause, when, when those dermal fibroblasts are going to be responsive still. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to talk about so that, I mean, it's not that it's ever too late, right? I don't want anyone to be like, well, shoot, like I'm past menopause, I should just give up. Not at all, but if you can, um, you, the fibroblasts will be much more responsive if you're able to intervene early. Um, Julia said it's not commercial enough, that's why it's not discussed more. Yeah, that's crazy to me just because um, so many of you guys in my group are, I have another cat hair. 
or maybe it's a puppy here. He's asleep right there. Um, so many of you in my Facebook group are like 40 plus, like a, a big group of you are like in that much more mature end of the spectrum, um, which I think is awesome. I think it's why we have such a great group because there's not a lot of like drama. Like I think a lot of the ladies in the group like have, have enough like life experience that we, you know how to talk to each other online, which is really nice. Um, but like I would say like a big part of you, um, a big part of the group are like ladies that are like kind of starting skincare a little bit earlier in life, maybe kind of through like the pandemic or, you know, having more time, which I think is awesome. But I don't see that's why I don't understand why it wouldn't be um, considered commercial enough. But anyway, I've probably gone off topic enough. Back to the conductivity solution, half a cup of warm tap water and a very small pinch of um, it has to be the total amount, right? So if you combine different different minerals like magnesium or salt, just make sure it's a, it's a pinch total, right? Like you're not doing a pinch of each. If you have too much salt, it can be a little bit drying and it also will start to re reduce conductivity if you have like way too much. Uh, but yeah, it, it, that's, uh, I will do, I'll do like a little, we'll do like an Instagram reel or something as well just to have the video out there, but it's on Instagram. Okay, why didn't I grab water? I just grabbed coffee. So when my mouth gets dry, I keep drinking more coffee and I feel like I'm getting more and more um, awake, which is good, but also kind of scattered. <laughs> okay, so uh, with Trent, and there's some more, my son took the, the tablet, so I don't, I might have to just slide and check the questions here, but the last thing I'll mention in the PM routine is, did I cover here? Okay, so we talked about the richer moisturizers, right? Um, a couple others that I didn't mention is the PY Addo Cream. This is a really good one. It's a little bit richer than the um, PY Nutrition Cream, if you guys have tried that. That's a favorite of mine. It's a really beautiful moisturizer, but not always rich enough for nighttime. So I've been trying this guy since it's a little bit thicker and richer. Um, in addition to the sauna I mentioned, I've also been trying the Regimen Labs uh, ceramide cream here, which is really nice as well. So for, I'm just gonna rub more product in my hands, why not? My skin, my, my hands were a little bit dry from over washing them anyway, so at least they're getting some love during this live. Okay, so when it comes to using Tret at night, it's all about buffering. That is my personal method of choice and one of the biggest things you can do like in your winter routine if you are dry and trying to deal with um, using a retinoid. So the way you want to buffer and there's okay There's a lot of trains of thought. I do want to add that really quickly Like a lot of times you'll hear dermatologists recommend that you cleanse your skin and then don't apply any skincare for two hours And the reason they suggest that um, Is because your skin is going to get, get dried out. It's going to get dehydrated You're gonna have moisture loss and the more dry the skin is the less that tretinoin is going to penetrate so by doing that, you are reducing the penetration of your trap and therefore the irritation and dryness. On the flip side of this though, for me, I find that cleansing my skin and letting it dry out also makes it dry from that. So that's why it's not personally my favorite recommendation. It works for some people. If you're a little bit more oily and you're not worried about dryness, just irritation, then that you know, method can absolutely work for you. What I like to do is I like to buffer instead which is to place a moisturizer in before the tretinoin, like something, and usually I won't pick something like insanely rich. I'll save that for after if, if my skin needs it. So I'll pick something like the Lemieux Sheer Hydration. Um, if you are, you know, if you're tolerating tretinoin fairly well, you could use the Moisture Milk I mentioned from Imagine Dermatology, or mi like mixed with Astradia, for example. Um, just like a slightly lighter moisturizer, I will place that before I place the tret. And what that does is it creates a buffer. It is not going to make your, your tret less effective. Hi, I think it's Brie. Hi, Brie, welcome. Brie, see it. correct me if I'm wrong. I'm terrible with names. Welcome to the live. Um, we are talking about tretinoin and how to kind of reduce irritation and kind of my preferred method for application. So I like to apply a lighter moisturizer first. Um, this is gonna create a buffer. It's not gonna make your tret less effective. Um, what, what, what you may know already or you may not is that tretinoin penetrates the skin very well and it can also diffuse through lipids in skincare products. So unless you're applying like a super thick layer of Vaseline or something, 
applying a moisturizer first will not make your tread less effective. It'll just slow down the penetration of tretinoin into your skin. Um, and this is going to reduce irritation and reduce the dryness. So buffering is my favorite method. Personally, I find it very effective. It's great at reducing dryness. And then the Dermatica formula also has some added ceramides and cholesterol that I find further reduce dryness. The other thing too to factor in is strength and kind of the frequency of use, right? A lot of people will think that they need to go straight to the 0.1%, the 0.5%, the 0.05%. Um, this isn't necessary if your goals are anti-aging. Um, tretinoin has been shown to be just about as effective at 0 0.025 um, for anti-aging as the higher strengths. So, you know, if you are not tr t uh, tolerating a 0 0.05 very well and your goals are only anti-aging, please feel free to drop down to the point. 0 to 5. Um, for acne, that's when the higher strengths can be helpful. And the other thing is I would suggest starting every third day, every three, every three to four days, but no more than that. Um, sometimes you'll see people who will, you know, they'll start using the tret like once a week. The problem with that is you'll use the tret, you'll get really irritated, um, and then your skin will normalize, and then you'll kind of start over the whole process a week later, and your skin never really fully acclimates. So I would, you know, the longest kind of frequency I would use is every three to four days and then slowly decrease to every other night and then every night if you can tolerate it. Um, that's the big one as well. The other thing, I think it was a question in the group and I will, I'll skip over to them and check them if I don't forget, if I don't remember everything, um, is like how to apply your tread. Oh, Daisy said I'm looking for it. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I know that a lot of you guys are in that kind of general range, which I think is just why I want to do the contact. Obviously, it doesn't apply to my skin, but I know that it, it will apply to for a lot of you guys. Um, and again, I think it's really critical in how you kind of adjust your your routine and your treatments and stuff. And there's some there is some you know some research stuff like topical estrogen therapy, um, but also a non you know non hormonal options as well. <sighs> Why didn't I grab water? So yeah, and I keep wanting to reach for my coffee, but I'm gonna refrain. Okay, um, back to back to track. Okay, application, and then we'll I will answer Jelena's question. So with um the with the tread, make sure that you're not applying too much. You know, I I have okay. I, I say this stuff not to be judgmental, but just because I know myself too, and I do the same stuff. A lot of times we think that. Um, more is more, right? It's really easy to kind of pump your your tret out, and you you know you get the pea sized amount that you're supposed to have, and then you add some more and some more because you figure like more must be better. <laughs> Not with tret; it is very potent medication. Stick to the pea sized amount. The Dermatica pumps out exactly a pea size, so it ends out perfectly. I'm not going to actually apply it to my face because it's daytime, and also you know obviously. Uh, tret is not very um, stable when, it, when it's exposed to light and air, but I'll kind of demonstrate. So I like to take the pea size amount and I take a little finger and I will dab this in little in little parts over my face. So I'll pretend my hand like is my face here. So I grab a little bit of time and I just kind of distribute it a little bit at a time over my whole face like this, really spreading it out. I avoid um, areas that like where the, the tret can kind of collect. So I'll avoid the nasolabial folds, the corners of the nose, the corners of the eyes, areas that are more sensitive and where the tret can kind of collect there and cause more irritation. Um, I'm just gonna rub this into my hands again. And then the other thing, uh, I think I think this is a question too um, from the thread. I need to check the thread. My son just took off with the tablet. Um, tret does migrate, right? It, so even if you don't apply it um, like right, you know, even if you, we avoid these areas, we're just making sure that, that you don't get an excess amount of tret kind of collecting there. You're still, it's still going to migrate and spread and get in those areas just through movement, the temp of the skin. Um, you know, again, tret is very potent. So it's not that you're not treating these areas. We're just trying to make sure that it doesn't collect there. Um, the other, and same with like the, the eye area, right? Like tret, you don't want to apply this right on your lid, right underneath your lash line. Um, you just want to take a little bit and follow the brow bone. Just kind of pat along the brow bone on, on top here and kind of follow the eye socket. Uh, the orbit is the name for the little bones that kind of frame the eye. Just tap along here and the, the warmth of your skin and the movement will carry the product where it needs to go. Um, okay, let me get caught up here. Um, if using azelaic acid, 
20% cream um, and the milky lotion, how would you apply it in terms of buffering the tret? Okay, so I would apply the milky lotion first um, and then I would do, I'm assuming this is like a richer, like the melazepam, for example, which is like a richer as like acid cream. So I would apply that next and then I would do the tread just because, um, as like acid is, is a, is an exfoliating, it's a mild exfoliant, it kind of works more superficially and it doesn't penetrate quite as well compared to like tread or something. So I would do the lighter milky lotion product just cause that's very light. Um, and then the acetic acid and then your, your tread. And those two preceding products should buffer the tread a little bit too. Um, Sheila said, I like using Strati Liquid Gold with tread. Yeah, it's a great product. I completely agree. Um, you, ha you have the niacinamide, which greatly reduces irritation from tread, but you also have the ceramides, the cholesterol, the fatty acids, so many ing great ingredients there that really help. Um, just because in that acclimation period, you do have some disruption of the skin barrier. So anything that you can use to help with that is really going to help with kind of your experience with tread. Like so many people um, will start tread and then they'll give up because of that irritation. So like slow and steady is definitely the way to go just to make sure that you really stick with it. Um, Daisy said, I'm, I'm 52, just started my skincare journey, wish I had years ago. Yeah, I, they're, you're definitely not not alone, right? Like, that's the experience of so many in the Facebook group. And I actually think it's awesome. Like, I think it's, it's never, you know, of course, like, if we could redo things, like, maybe we would start earlier. Um, I feel, like, really lucky that I, that I started, like, in my early 20s. And it was only because I had my son, and I noticed a crazy difference to my skin. Like, my, I just, I didn't even recognize myself after the pregnancy, so I kind of ended up getting into skincare as a result of that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have. Um, you know, so if we, if, if, if we, you can start earlier, great. If not, though, it's definitely never too late, which is, you know, the good thing. Um, and, you know, and, and because of that, if you are starting a little bit later, like, you don't want to, you don't want to be, like, misled with marketing and BS, right? Like, you need, you want to know what works. You can get started and really start to see results, which is why I think it's so important to kind of, like, not be fooled by brand claims and marketing and incorrect information and myths, which is why I try to kind of structure my content accordingly. Um, because you know, you don't, you don't want to have like 10, you don't want to spend another, I just dropped my second product of the live, <laughs> darn, jinxed myself by talking about it earlier. Well, it was both of the Lemieux creams too, like of all the products to, to drop, but it has to be the pricey ones. Um, <laughs> Anyway, you don't want to spend another 10 years, like, try, you know, trying, like, products that, like, I don't know, like, a, some big influencer talked about because of a brand deal, or, you know, a brand said that it was going to erase your wrinkles. Like, you want to know it works, and you just want to get started and see some great results, hopefully. Okay, the last thing I will mention, so we talked about, like, extra additional things, right? Like, humidifier by your bedroom. Um, the la I will mention that I do find sheet masks to be a big lifesaver during, like, dry... I almost dropped the third item, but I caught it. So I do find sheet masks to be kind of a lifesaver. Um, on my Instagram, I did that recent little reel where I talked about how I love to use a facial oil underneath a cream sheet mask and when my skin is like really dry from Tret. You don't have to do it that way, um, but I do love to use like really moisturizing and hydrating ingredients. These ones are from Arston. Oh, it's gonna be backwards on here. But A-R-Z-T-I-N. -A uh, they are a K-beauty brand, but they're like German inspired, but they're, they're on Amazon. I've talked about them before. They're in my Amazon store. These are great, particularly the milk toning mask. And then they have another, um, like moisturizer mask. That's awesome too. That has like a bunch of layers. These are so, so moisturizing. So if you wake up and you have dry flaky skin and you pop this, pop this on and then put like a silicone mask cover on, um, so good. And if you have some extra time, and you want to add a couple drops of like a facial oil, you want to look for something high in linoleic acid and high in linolenic acid. These are, you know, these are fatty acids that are really good for the skin barrier. They're anti-inflammatory. So hemp seed, sunflower, most fruit seed oils like watermelon, raspberry, blackberry, great. Um, and then this one is from Ozone Factory. So it's an ozonized oil, which is awesome. I will I'll do, a, I'll do a deep dive. But if you've heard of like the Osmosis Rescue, a similar kind of idea where they've ozonized 
the oils. Um, and you will kind of smell like that distinct ozone smell. If you've ever tried it, you kind of know what I, what I mean. Oh, Jelena, you tried the Arston mask? Yeah, they're, aren't they great? Like, they're really moisturizing. And they're fragrance-free, too, which is really hard to find, surprisingly, in a lot of sheet masks. So I, I think they're great. I want to try, they're, it's funny, they're, they're sheet masks are fragrance free, but they have a couple products that have a fragrance or essential oils, which, which is, it's usually the reverse, so I was kind of bummed. I do have a toner from them, though, that I'm trying. Uh, it was, it's pretty good so far. I wouldn't say it's as good as the toners that I talked about. Um, but they have like an EGF ampule, um, and they have some nice moisture. I do want, I want to try more from them that doesn't have fragrance, so I'll kind of look through things some more. Okay, um, but yes, ozone, o ozonized oils, great if your skin is irritated, dry, flaky, um, and you don't want to splurge the money on the Rescue from Osmosis. Great product, a little bit more cos cosmetically elegant, um, but, you know, pricey, obviously. So an ozonized oil is great. I'll apply a single drop under a sheet mask, and awesome. Okay, um, I'm going to wrap this up in a sec. Oh, I didn't mention, the last one I'll mention is this guy from Dr. Sirical. I know that a couple of you guys in the group have already heard about it. Um, look, look. <laughs> so look, I've used this much, which looks like very little, but I've had this for three or four months. Um, it's just really rich and you only, so it's, it's a bi-phase toner for one. So you have to shake it up before you use it because you have a separate oil and water phase. So you shake it up really good. Um, and then you, it's, it's pretty much like a lotion, like they call it a, a, a kombucha essence. It's a lotion in my mind. Um, once you shake it up, see it's, it's a really milky, moisturizing product. This is so good if you're dry. Um, and it has the black tea, it has kombucha, it has some nice kind of fermented ingredients. Um, and very moisturizing product. I use three drops of this. Um, usually under like sunscreen or something, so that's why it's barely used. But it is, it's been getting a lot of attention online, and I did want to mention that that is a good product too. Okay, first I started out with not having had enough coffee, and now I feel like I've had too much, and I'm slowly losing my mind over here. But I'm going to really quickly peek at the questions. I don't know if it'll make me disappear or not, but um, yeah, I'm going to peek at the questions super quick. Hopefully I don't disappear. Give me one sec here. Make sure I covered everything. Did I dis Someone let me know maybe in the comments if I disappeared during that or if you could hear me. I don't know. Okay, so the question that someone in the Facebook group had asked, and just let me know if I disappeared or if it froze. Um, but the question was, someone has been using tretinoin for six weeks and they were wondering how to tell. Um, okay, so I do disappear when I check the questions is what I'm, I'm thinking here. Okay, maybe I'll grab, maybe I'll steal the tablet from my kid for the last couple minutes. But um, the question was, I've been using tretinoin for six weeks. How do I tell if it's working? So the thing that you really want to know with tret um, is that it takes time to work. Um, if you're using a, retin a retinol product, it actually takes a full six months to work. Tretinoin starts to work a little bit quicker, but it, it starts to work at like three to four months. So um, this person was wondering like why they weren't experiencing a lot of glow um, yet from Tret, and that's just because it has not started to work yet. Um, it'll begin at three to four months, but full results start to be it start at like the one year mark. So um, that's why that's why they're not noticing results yet. I will say that the acclimation period is four to six weeks. So um, once you get past that, um, and it's not to see that's not to say that you won't see any changes at all at, you know, in the three to four months. But that's when like it really starts to, to really take effect research-wise, and especially starting as far as like the dermal collagen, et cetera. Um, but you know, four to six weeks is typically when the acclimation period is over. Um, and if you're increasing the strength um, and you're not in a hurry, that's the way to, to do it as well. Um, yes, I first saw anti yes, exactly, three to four months. Um, oh, once you get to the year mark, that's when like the full results really start to take effect. Um, the acclimation period though, four to six weeks. So if you are trying to kind of work your way up in dose and you have time, you're not in a hurry. Um, I would wait four to six weeks between each bump up in strength. That is the way to get, to just minimize irritation and dryness. Now, if you are in a hurry, you can wait, you could change every, every two to three weeks. It's just not ideal. You are going to get more irritation that way. Um, let me catch up here. Okay, so it does freeze. I wish it didn't, uh, cause 
I'm debating whether I should just get grab the tablet from my kid real quick so we can wrap this up in a reasonable time frame. Have you tried the gel cream by, I have not tried the Dr. Spherical gel cream yet just because I suspect it's a little bit light for my skin type. What I will say is that um, Dr. Spherical used to be named Lee G Ham and then it was LGH before that. They're, they're a K-beauty brand that I've used for years um, and I have yet to try a product from them that I did not like. So I, I, my first like holy grail product ever when I first started out in skincare was their, um, tea, not green tea, the tea tree essence. And this has, it had a tea tree extract and it was so hydrating. And sadly they reformulated it. That's like the devastation of K-Beauty, right? Like you will fall in love with a product. Like, you know, you're into K-Beauty when you've had products that you've fallen in love with and they've been discontinued or reformulated. Like that's the unfortunate downside of K-Beauty. Um, and it's just, I think it's just be part of like the, it's the downside of like that innovation aspect, right? They're constantly releasing great new products and new, you know, new trendy ingredients and it's really fun and exciting. But the flip side is, is that you can fall in love with something and it will be discontinued or reformulated. So their, their uh, tea tree essence was like my first holy grail product ever. Um, their propolis uh, ampule is excellent. Usually I can't use propolis, it actually causes my skin to be congested. Um, you know, and kind of break out. That product doesn't, and, you, and I get that nice glow that a lot of people enjoy from uh, propolis type products. Um, so I don't think you can go wrong with um, Dr. Circle. They're a great brand. I just haven't tried that one because I think it's probably a little light for my skin type. Okay. Oh, hi, Claudia. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. That's okay. It was. Um, <laughs> This is just one of those, I, I was t telling everyone at the start of the live that I normally do a Wednesday live, or I've been trying to do a Wednesday live every week, and yesterday I spent the whole day thinking it was Tuesday, so we're already, um, I don't know what we're doing with this live, but it's been, it's been fun, even though I've had a little bit too much caffeine, I think. Okay, so... Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the tablet and I'm gonna bust out the questions because otherwise I'm gonna be going back and forth. There's only a few of them. I think there's only five. Um, yeah, otherwise we're gonna be going back and forth. Oh, okay, I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna I'm gonna drink another sip of coffee because my mouth is dry. Because otherwise I won't be able to answer them. Okay, give me two seconds, you guys. I will answer the last five questions and then we will wrap this up. I'm just going to answer these last couple of questions. Um, do you want to sit with me? Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I just figured that was the best way to use it. My son was just using his tablet for shows while I did that. So I have a little, somebody's playing hooky today. Um, not really. It's a half day this week for them, and he wasn't feeling good. He's been having awful allergies he's, and he hasn't slept all week. You want to sit next to me while I answer the last couple questions? Can you say hi guys? Hi guys. He calls you guys my skincare ladies. <laughs> I wasn't that supposed to tell him that? Sorry buddy. Okay so Casey said I want to know if you can still get a hydrofacial if you use retinol or exfoliating in general. So we kind of answered that at the start of the routine, or at the start of, uh, the, start of the live. Um, you just want to be very careful when you're, oh, of course someone's using the, it's a leaf blower outside. We'll just jam through them and we'll end up. So you can exfoliate. Someone said, hi, cute boy. Hi. He says, hi. <laughs> um, you can exfoliate, as we mentioned at the very start of the live, there's all kinds of distractions. We, I think we made, at least we made it through most of the live without a ton of di uh, distractions. So yes, you can, just very carefully. Um, retinol is much better tolerated versus Tret. Your favorite, okay, you can use your face. Is that why you got up and washed your face? So you can use that? <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, um, so what I will actually do a lot of the time is I will jump to a retinol versus a Tret if I'm microneedling, if I'm doing peels just to reduce irritation. So that's always an option. 
Um, retinol is just much easier, just give a lot less irritation. But yes, you can exfoliate, again, as we mentioned in the start of the live, you just wanna minimize that irritation. So if you're doing TRET, you don't wanna be exfoliating every single day. Um, and if you're doing like a hydrofacial or something, I would probably tr um, skip TRET the night before, um, if, especially if it's like your first hydrofacial. The leaf blood blower is right by the window. I'm sorry, you guys, we're almost done. Okay, so Leanne had a couple of questions here, um, so we'll just jump right through them. She said, one, signs that your current routine isn't working anymore. Uh, well, first off, um, you know, products don't just stop working, right? Sometimes we feel like that is the case, um, or that's like a common myth, right? Do you need to sit down? Okay, so that's a common myth, right? That like maybe a product will suddenly stop working. I would not say that's the case. Um, what does happen is, if you're new to a product, you're going to see more dramatic kind of changes at the start. Now we've got a train. I'm just going to keep on talking. Um, so, you know, you're going to see more dramatic changes at the beginning of the routine. Um, it's not that the product stops working, though. It's just that you're kind of continuing to maintain your progress versus seeing those vi visible kind of dramatic changes as you begin a new routine. What can happen, though, is that your skin can change, right? Um, you might have a routine that works really well for you, and factors like hormones or climate um, or time of year can mean that you need to adjust your routine accordingly. That's different, um, and I think that an important skill as you... <laughs> I, I actually have moisturizer on, so I wouldn't put it on me, but you can use it. An important skill, you know, as you kind of are learning about your skin and learning about your routine is being able to adjust whether it's day to day um, or you know throughout the seasons right um, I, ha I will add an, an extra hydrating step if my, my routine needs more hydration that day so I think it's good to kind of factor in whether your skin is more dry or maybe you're seeing more congestion so you need to add in a salicylic acid or you need to bump to tret um, you know you have to you want to be regularly assessing your skin and its needs and I could probably do a whole video on that if you guys want. Um, do you need to reapply sunscreen as much in the winter? Yes. Um, the reason for that is um, UVA is actually the primary concern. So we have UVA rays, we have UVB rays, and nine out of 10 of the rays that we come in contact with or, and that are reaching the surface of the planet are UVA. And these can are, these UVA rays are present during like cloudy overcast weather. Um, they, if you're standing directly in front of a window that is not UV tinted, you're still exposed. So it is important to um, reapply uh, during the, you know, the same frequency if you're outside. You know, of course, the exception to this would be like if you're not in daylight as much due to winter, right? So if it's getting dark, then of course you don't, you know, if there's no sunlight, then you don't need to reapply. Or if you are inside more and you don't have a ton of windows, then you don't need to reapply as much. Um, should we not exfoliate as much in winter? I would say yes, again, because over exfoliation disrupts the skin barrier. Um, it's gonna worsen dryness and, and irritation. So I would exfoliate less or just be more gentle in your exfoliation, you know, using a washcloth or a cognac sponge with your cleanser like we talked about. Um, <laughs> is blowing snow slash hail a natural exfoliation method? Haha, <laughs> I'm half joking. Uh, <laughs> Yes, that's your answer. Well, I should let you answer some of these. One of these days, I'll let you answer all the questions, and we'll see what he says. Um, as we mentioned, the, the environment is a big factor in dry skin. Okay, you can sit with me, but make sure it's quiet. If it's quiet, okay, with good behavior. So, um, envi those environmental factors are going to contribute to dryness and dehydration, but not so much um, exfoliation. Okay, so a couple more questions. We're almost at the Sit quietly, please. Okay. So Heather said a few things. Can you use acid peels when first starting TRET? How much time to wait between? Um, okay, so for that first part of the question, I would not do a peel when you are first getting acclimated to TRET. Just because TRET and Owen already can make a peel seem much stronger, right? Um, if, you've, if, you haven't, if you've been doing peels and then you've added TRET to your routine, a peel that you've done a dozen times before, um, okay. Goober. I gotta wrap this up. A peel that you've done a bunch of times before can suddenly be way stronger because you've added tread. So I would make sure that you your skin is acclimated to that tread first. 
and you're gonna want to start to by skipping the trap knowing several days like stop your trap several days out um, Benny I know you're a little goober but let me finish okay um, start the stop the trap knowing three to four days out the first time and then you can kind of just decrease that frequency um, as you go um, but you know really you will never regret being conservative with a peel ever <laughs> but you will regret going too strong and you know getting a chemical burn etc the chemical yeah that was the right word um, okay can applying tretinoin for only an hour or two at a time mitigate some of the dryness of peeling now, are there actives or treatments you should absolutely avoid while using TRET? Um, so that would be called contact therapy, right? We can we use a similar principle for like benzyl peroxide. As I mentioned, my personal favorite method um, for application is buffering. But if that is still, you know, if you're still way too dry and irritated, you can try the contact therapy. The thing is that um, like benzyl peroxide can work in a short amount of time because it's mainly antibacterial. So it can get to work quickly, even if you leave it on for 10 minutes. Where, you know, TRET, you know, you do, you do get more benefit as it's kind of staying on the skin for longer since it's penetrating deep into the skin. So I prefer buffering, but if that's still, if you're still super dry, you can try the contact therapy method first. Um, and then as far as actives or treatments to avoid, when your skin is acclimating to TRET, you want to avoid anything irritating or exfoliating. Um, skip the benzyl peroxide, skip the... Um, chemical exfoliants, but not right here, please. Um, you know, any uh, skip the kojic acid or you know the hydroquinone. Just let your skin acclimate, and then you can slowly add those things back in. Um, just because if you've ever if you've ever over exfoliated or you're or really like just irritated the crap out of your skin from Tret, you'll know what I mean. It's a miserable process, and then you have to stop everything, let your skin recover, and start over. And it's just a pain in the butt. So if you can avoid that, you want to do that. I think I missed one. Um, okay, so Zeev said the kombucha essence is amazing. Um, got it a week ago per your recommendation thing. Oh, good. Yay. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank I, I love comments. I love hearing like feedback. And, and it's good too because if I absolutely love something and someone doesn't have a good experience, I want to know too, of course. But it's awesome to hear that you're liking it. It's really moisturizing. Um, a lot of times, like milky toners. I feel are in that like weird in between where like um, either it's not like it'll just become a pain to use because it's not it's like not quite moisturizing enough but then it's still thick enough where it doesn't layer nicely so I, I think that's a good like it's the perfect balance um, okay hi ink welcome um, she said I've been using a for two months now and I still can't use conductive gel as spraying my skin right now um, in general how long does it take Back to go back for normal. So usually by the two month mark, your skin should be fairly acclimated. Um, which conductive gel? I mean, so it's tricky with retinoids, right? Because usually if a, if a, if a non-irritated product is stinging, that's because your skin barrier is compromised, right? It's not due to that product. Like if you're just applying a regular moisturizer that has nothing exfoliating or no retinoids or anything and it stings, it's the skin barrier, not the product. Um, but if it's only that product, two months out, I would maybe kind of mix around and see if it's any conductive gel. Um, I would look at how you're using it, you know, make sure that you're buffering, make sure that you're using a really gentle cleanser, that you're using a rich enough moisturizer. It could be that you don't have enough kind of supportive skincare steps to help your skin better tolerate it. So if you're two months in and you're still seeing that much irritation, I would um, look at look at the additional skincare steps and also look at the frequency, the amount you're applying, and how you're applying it. Just because I would, you know, but two months in, you should start to see, you know, your skin getting more acclimated, especially with the dapoline, because that one's usually better tolerated than Tret. So I would look at some of those things and see if it helps. Um, okay, so last couple questions. Um, okay, so I, I think I already answered that one. So Kim said, Kimberly said, if someone uses Tret and is prone to milia, what heavier moisturizer can they use in winter slash for dryness without getting milia? Um, I, oh yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Ink, of course. Um, so this is a tricky one because skin can be very personal, right? A lot of times people will, if you're acne prone, for example, you start your, your skincare journey and you avoid anything that has any kind of rating on the comedogenic, 
I need water, comatogenic scale, there we go. So you just avoid anything. Like if it has a one, nope, not using it. Um, but this can be kind of like a rigid stance when it comes to skincare. Um, just because one, those ratings are based on testing done on rabbit ears, which won't necessarily apply all the time to human skin. Um, also, these ingredients are being tested at 100%, not in a finished formula at a lower percentage with other ingredients. And then of course, skin is just highly personal. We all have our own triggers. So, you know, you may be able to use a richer moisturizer, even if you have milia, um, if it's the right one. Um, I would, one, I mean, when you look at the, the emollient type ingredients, look for ones that are high in linoleic acid versus oleic acid, as these tend to be like less pore clogging and more beneficial for the skin barrier. Um, and, you know, look for something that maybe is a little bit more of a, of a rich gel versus like a tip of like a balm or cream. Um, like you could try the sauna, um, you could try the Lemieux Sheer Hydration. This is a gel moisturizer, but it's very moisturizing. Um, and then also too with Tret, remember to apply it in a very small amount and following the socket and not going into, or following the bones that frame the socket and not going into the socket itself. Um, you know, that would probably be my tips. But then, you know, again, you might need to try a couple of moisturizers out um, and, and find something, you know, you could find something really rich that doesn't, you know, cause milia for you. It's very personal in that way. Um, the Allentoin and the Nature Kind. Oh, okay, you tried those out too. Yeah, I love, I love both of those. Um, the Nature Kind uh, Urea 5 Cream, the Super Barrier Urea 5 Cream, so good. It feels like really fresh on the skin and like really hydrating. Um, and I, <laughs> I was dry. That's like, but hey, they didn't fall off the desk, but I, that's, I think that's my signal that I need to wrap this up, dropping everything. Um, I like that it's a different take on a barrier cream, if that makes sense. It's not like your classic ceramide, cholesterol, fatty acids, right? Like, not that those aren't great, but it's, it's a little bit more of an interesting take on it and really hydrating feeling. And then, of course, the Dermatory Allentine Balm is, um, yeah, it has a very distinctive smell, for sure. I think it's the, re the urea. Usually, urea products have that type of smell. Um, Oh, the Allentine Balm. If you're super dry, like it's intense, like it's very heavy, but if you're super dry, it's a lifesaver. Um, okay, we talked about the Milia. I think there's only a couple more. Um, we're currently offline. At, maybe it's just this one, that's weird, okay. Okay, so Susan said, do we need to exfoliate if we're using Tret? I mainly answered this earlier, but the answer is no, um, you know, Exfoliation in general is optional just because the skin has its own exfoliation process. Tretinoin is also hurrying that process along. Um, but if you want to exfoliate or you have a specific concern, then you can just do so carefully. Um, and you know, it should just be done in a targeted and very intentional way, basically. Um, Jelena, okay, she, she's, I think she was here. She might, I don't know if she's still here, but she was here earlier. Um, she said, I have combination skin, the winter is more dry than usual, I guess mainly because of Tret. Um, my routine, according to the guides for combination skin, okay, so she's using the combo skin routine from the Facebook group. I have added a hydrating serum and Vienna cream or petrolatum to the evening. Do you think that that should be enough or should I change anything else? Um, I would look at your cleanser just because, again, I don't think that that can be stressed. Oh, okay. I'm glad you're still here when I'm answering your question. So I would look at your cleanser just because I think that that is often a forgotten step that has a huge impact on the skin barrier function and dryness and hydration, right? So, you know, look, if you're using like a gel cleanser, you might want to consider a cream cleanser, even though you're combo, um, just because you're using Tret. Um, and then the rest of your question, the skin between my nose and mouth is still very dry. I, um, I think you're already using the petroleum jelly. That's what I would apply in those areas. Um, and again, you can avoid like the nasal labial folds in the corner of the nose. Don't apply Tret there just because it tends to kind of collect in those areas and cause a lot more irritation and dryness. Um, I would also, oh, okay. Actually, I think that was part of your question. I'm also interested on your view of applying Tret around the eyes, mouth, and neck. Um, so as we talked about earlier, Tret, yes, Tret does migrate and spread. Um, for the neck and chest, it's very dependent on you and your skin. I have a very sensitive neck and chest. 
I have to stick to a retinol, like this one from A. Florence or the Geek and Gorgeous one. I can't consistently. phone call. Uh, I can't use consistently used tret in this area. It'll depend on you and your skin. Um, and yes, because tretinoin does spread and migrate, I would avoid areas that it will kind of collect, like the, no the corners of the nose and the nasal labia folds, because it will still spread into those areas, and that's why we're minimizing having too much there. Um, or it asked, is higher percentage of tret more beneficial? Um, as we mentioned, uh, it depends on the skin concern. For acne, yes, anti-aging, no. Um, Holly said, can you do microneedling and tret on the same night? Um, it'll depend on the depth. Um, for medical needling, I would do it the next day. Cosmetic needling, yes, but do them separately to start with. Oh yeah, of course, no problem. And I actually, I didn't realize there were so many questions, <laughs> but that's, that's okay, we're, we're jamming through them and we're almost done. Um, okay, can I use TRET with anti-age MD at the same time? So I believe that the doctors, um, you know, the, the doctors behind the anti-age brand have recommended, have recommended like doing a wait period in between. Um, because we don't have a ton of research on this, I tend to just say follow the brand direction if that makes sense. Um, so they recommend for anti-age to wait. One sec, Betty, I'm almost done. Thank you for being so patient. Um, with copper peptides, though, you can combine them and use them together. And it'll actually help irritation from the retinoids, if you, uh, from your tread. If you have a copper peptide product, like the GHKQ from NCN or the Ordinary or NIOD. Um, how much peeling is normal? I'm still pe peeling even though I'm using it every other day. Very, very, very dependent on your skin. It can really vary. Um, I was using 0.05 and at the year mark I was still getting a lot of peeling. So it just kind of depends on your skin um, and it, you may need to dial back to a gentler strength if you're uh, using tretinoin long term and using all the supportive skincare and you're still getting peeling and it's bothering you. I'm um, not sure if I'm late, but how long must you... Uh, for tretinoin, I would start um, a minimum, I would wait three to four days, um, and then you can slowly decrease that time. Okay, I think I got everything. I'll answer these last few questions, and then I've got to go, because I'm actually about to get an Instacart order, and I don't want them to be inaccessible. I'm not sure if you've covered, but how do you deal with itchiness upon application of retinoids? That is usually, um, that usually indicates some barrier impairment. Um, and that means you have some over exfoliation occurring. Um, I, I would consider allantoin, panthenol, and the bisablol that we mentioned earlier, as these are anti-irritant, anti-itch, and just great ingredients. I would also buffer if you're not already. Um, and then consider a formula like Dramatica that has those added lipids in there. Um, I thought that Bacuchiol was nature's form of vitamin A. Would it be irritating to use after tretinoin? Um, so you definitely don't need both, right? I, I, the, you will see Bacuchiol combined with retinol, um, just because, do you, Betty, do you want to have a check of the orders here? Thanks, Betty. Um, you will see Bacuchiol combined with retinol, like from Paula's Choice or the Good Molecules. This is because retinol is much more proven, where there's a very little evidence for Bacuchiol. Usually the only time I recommend it is if you're like pregnant or trying to get pregnant and you don't want to use a retinoid. Okay, last one. Is there a downside of using high percentage tretinoin for anti-aging if well tolerated? No. Um, you know, the tretinoin is highly studied, very researched. It's a very large body of research. Um, you know, the concern is like if your skin is always irritated and dry and flaky, um, this indicates that your barrier is going to be impaired, um, and this can impact how your skin is able to protect itself. Um, I have a whole post on the blog about the skin barrier and all the inbuilt protections and stuff. Um, the skin, you know, the skin barrier has an antioxidant, um, has antioxidant protection, photoprotection, protects against pathogens. Like there's all these in these all these protective mechanisms of the skin barrier essentially. And it was dry and irritated. Um, you know, you might not, your skin barrier might, might not be protecting itself optimally. So that's why, um, not yet, thanks buddy. That's why if, you know, you are six months to a year out and your skin is really dry and irritated, 
you, you may want to consider coming down. But if you have no side effects, then you know yeah, that's completely fine to stay on the higher strength. Okay, <laughs> I feel like my energy was really frantic in this live. I feel like it's been that way lately anyway. But hopefully I answered all the questions. Hopefully um, it was helpful. <laughs> what I will do is again, I will put all the products mentioned in the description and I'll try to organize it in a way that makes sense, okay? So I'll do like AM, PM, um, and I'll, you know, uh, products used with tread. I'll, I'll, I'll organize it as soon as I have a sec in a way that makes sense. Um, and I'll link my store. Um, and then I will do a Instagram version just with the visuals because I think oh, that's helpful. We all learn differently. And some of you guys um, like to do the live. Some of you guys like the more edited videos. Some of you just want the like the visual on Instagram with just the products. So I will do that version as well just to make it really simple. So I'm going to put on some sunscreen and do my hair. And then we are going to, well, you've got to do homework actually, mister. And then we'll do something fun. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys. I know it's going to kind of be a little bit crazy with the schedule changes. It's part of having a kiddo at home and all that good stuff. Um, you're, you're so knowledgeable. Thank you for, oh, sure. Yeah, no, I, uh. I think that knowledge should be shared and I, I all this stuff is in my head anyway and I might as well share it with you guys and put it to good use um, and I just really appreciate you guys and just gives me a lot of like joy um, in my life to get to share something that I love and I'm passionate about and hearing that it's helpful to you guys is always awesome and just really rewarding so I appreciate you guys so much I'm gonna go ahead and end this and get on with my day I think his patience level has run out, which understandably. <laughs> do you want to say bye? Ollie, do you want to say bye? Come here, puppers. Come here. Come here. You're, you are so patient. He slept the whole time. You slept the whole time. Say hi. Hi, buddy. Bye. <laughs> um, I think I missed one. And we're, now we're knocking stuff over. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, bye, bye, Jelena. Bye, you guys. Oh, you grabbed the cat too. <laughs> yeah, the cat does not like to be picked up. This is my life, you guys. <laughs> Pure chaos. <laughs> Cats, puppies, and kids. And rats. And your rats. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm going to go ahead and end the live. <laughs>